Okay, so we're going to start out stage one, right, where the air tankers are not active, so we're going to be focused on the ground crews. And uh, now we're going to move into the RF view and look at what's, what the teams are telling each other in, in the collaboration channel. What we see is like green and red are, are on top of each other there, right? And then red sort of moved in and took it, and we saw green move from the bottom up to the top. Right now, it yeah. seems, seems simple at first, but I want to highlight something here. Green was on top. Green Helmic Radio, you guys were on top of Airbus, right? And when they recognized that there was a conflict, instead of duking it out with Airbus, they instead targeted Marmot E and moved up into Marmot E's band. Well, and, and, and Ben, they, you know, they, they haven't actually made that move yet, but they're actually forecasting they're gonna that, do it. That's right. that this is where they're going to go in the future. That's right. I, I don't know if this is your background in offensive cybersecurity, guys. <laughs> it seems like uh, a little aggression there. And so, yeah, my question for Paul is, does it make sense? Yeah, well, I, Ben, look, it, um, I think it makes sense, right? These, these guys only had the six, seven months, maybe, uh, in this competition, right? So they really had to focus or decide where they're going to focus their energy. Um, in this case, right, at the time when they're they're jockeying here with, with Team Erebus, Erebus only has 13 points. Marmody's got 18 points. So if I'm going to steal Spectrum from somebody, I'm going to steal it from the team that's currently achieving the most in hopes that after I've taken that Spectrum from them, they'll find some way to, to rearrange and continue to score those points. So I think this is the Robin Hood moment, right? These, these guys have clearly very strategically decided that they're going to find out who that best performing team is Try to take their spectrum uh, in, in hopes that there's a recovery. Check this out, Paul. I got an icon added to the Illustrator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have thusly been anointed as Robin Hood Team Mac Radio. All right, now before we continue to roll, I want to highlight here that red was scoring 13, blue was scoring 18, green is currently scoring zero, which is fine. They're not really using the spectrum right now. They're just figuring right out what to do. Right. So check this out. Let's go ahead and run the match, please. So. Blue and green manage to figure out how to timeshare without interfering with each other, and the score stabilizes, and green is now scoring more than anybody, yeah. right? And they did not crater blue score, right? Blue is still putting points on the board. So it seemed like a good strategy. They, it, it they targeted blue, they took their spectrum, and, and, and here they are with points, and they haven't really stolen much from Marmot 8. That's right. I, I did, this strategy appears to have worked out for you guys pretty well, and the ensemble is overall doing okay. <laughs> um, now. I will note, though, that the ensemble is still just below, just south of 50% of the possible points in this stage. Um, and there are a lot of gaps here, Paul. This is pretty underutilized. So what do you think is going on? Um, I, I, think, I think we're yet again in sort of one of those compounded effects where we see the different styles of decision making of the teams actually coming together in a way that is both positive and negative. So. Um, uh, ben, if you could just zoom in on the, yep. the top of Erebus there for me. I'll get it. Hold on. Perfect. Uh, uh, there we I go. I love it. Um, so each one of the icons you see here is a command and control link that we've asked Team Erebus to, to successfully close. I think what's clear here is that part of their strategy is to prioritize the wireless traffic, the applications we've given them, in order of easiest to hardest, right? So the command and control links are easiest, but it, it looks like they won't move on from command and control links until they get that 14th one, right? They're getting 13 to 14 of them right now, and so they're they're stuck. They won't try those voice calls until we get that, that 14th uh, command and control link done. On top of that, I think we've previously seen that it looks like how um, uh, Marmot E may be trying to follow just closely ahead of the lowest performing team. And we also know that how make radio it seems to be trying to constrain their spectrum usage, in this case, again, yet again, to, to roughly maybe a third of the bandwidth. So, again, we, we have a, a condition where each of the teams has made a decision that ultimately affects the outcome, so that they do score points, but they're not scoring as many points as, as they really should. So, because Howmic Radio Green, Marmot E, and Blue are trying to be generous and making decisions based on that, but Airbus is not closing a link, and so won't move on, uh, it's sort of like this lack of a better phrase, chain reaction of an artificial limitation. That's right. You know, if, I, I suspect if, if Erebus were to move up, then we'd start to see the rest of the group move up as well. Okay. So, so far, we've only looked at stage one. Right. Let's move into stage two, which has air tankers. So, Ben, when we do that, one of the things I want to remind the audience here is that the first stage, we're just looking at the ground. We're just looking at those firefighters. They're relatively stationary. They've got um, more or less a stable interference pattern from each other. 
But in round two and three and four, we're going to start to fly those air tankers in, and we're going to cause dynamics spatially and, and in time. Because we're bringing in traffic that wasn't interfering, we're going to bring those tankers in, they're going to interfere with the ground crews. And we've also asked each of those tankers to have command and control, we're going to fly them remotely, and to send us video data back, right? So two new areas of dynamics that are really going to challenge uh, these teams in terms of the strategy they've already come up with here, Ben. I think challenge is the right word. So let's go ahead and run the match. We're going to zoom back out to show the spatial view. And again, these are the ground crews. Uh, those are our relays. And we see the air tankers are over here in the staging area, and they're going to start to make their pass. Two teams are going to start to make their pass around to the ground crews. Now, so we're going to roll this forward until the air tankers approach and then, and then pause it. And Paul, I'm going to explain something here. So we're going to pop up the traffic from one of the air tankers. So what we're looking at here is we have, uh, we're looking at specifically the wireless traffic from one of the air tankers. Right. So here you see video traffic and command and control. In this case, neither of them are being serviced, right? But it's, it's fine because they, we see it actually at the starting. It's pretty early on. Um, so continue to run the match. What we're going to see here is red is actually servicing command and control. Green helmet radio is not currently serving either of the applications, including video. As we move into stage two, we see effectively no change between stages one and two in terms of how the spectrum is used, despite the fact that we added a completely new dynamic here with high, very high priority traffic. Yeah, it looks really similar to me, Ben. Okay, so let's continue to run the match. And when we zoom out and look at the entire match, what we're going to see here is we're going to widen our view. There we go. Yeah, we're going to widen the view. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the stage boundary. I'm actually going to see this pretty well on the screen, but just for effect. These are the stage boundaries. If you look at what happens just after the stage boundaries, right, note the churn. Right, so every time they cross one of these boundaries, this ensemble sort of goes into this exploration. Everything, gets, everything gets, goes up in the air. They go into this exploration mode. They try to figure out, how am I going to service this video traffic, which is very difficult. It, apparently does not work out so well, and they sort of give it up and go back to the strategy they found in, in stage one. So Ben, it, it seems both good and bad to me, because we see we do see them trying to react to the change. We also see them being smart enough to revert back to something that was working. Um, but at the same time, I still see a lot of empty spectrum there but, um, in, in terms of that, that strategy to revert back to. So it, but there is a solution to this problem. These guys just aren't finding it. And I think what you just said is exactly right, because if you look at the if you look at the scores, they consistently their scores are pretty consistent throughout the entire thing because they're always going back to the same strategy. Let's go into the match summary. Yeah, Ben. So I, I actually find it very positive that these teams, when they do revert back to that strategy, that they get the same score. So it's like they found something that works and they know how to get back to it. They know how to get back to it quickly, and they get about the same score every time. So we know it's it's very stable. So. Um, both good and bad here, right? Good in that we, we're still seeing that element of stability that we like and that we hope to see, but bad in terms of uh, we're, we're really not seeing that reaction um, uh, to the new traffic, the air tankers, the dynamics that we talked about.